Welcome to Comment Cocktails. I'm your host, Eric Schomer. That's Ian Andrews. And today, we're going to do some reviews. Yeah, uh, we're starting with uh, Tamworth Tamworth Silly Companies. Uh, we're doing the Art in the Age Garden. Yes, the Garden Gar Infusions. Garden Infusions. So there's a cordial here, Black Trumpet Blueberry eat. Cordial. It sounds, I don't know what a black trumpet is. It sounds like a flower. A celebration in your mouth. It does. And floral gin. Flora. Flora. Isn't that what I said? No. Did I, put an I don't L? know. Did I put an L on the end? I heard an L, but that's because it sounds like it should have an L there. Okay. It's more like a, it's, you're saying it with a mass accent. It's Flora. Flora. Yeah. I'm not even from Mass. No. And well, I'm going to review this one separately because I think it it's kind of needs its own review, but that's their, their White Mountain Vodka from Tamworth. It's State. a vodka that reminds me more of a corn moonshine. moonshine. Yeah. Um, these garden infusions from the, the Art in the Age, one of the things that's a little bit different if you've had Sage, Art in the Age Sage, uh, root, um, and whatever the heck, the, the snap. Snap, yeah, the root. Shit, they're around here somewhere. Uh, those products are also created by the, the same creator, which is Stephen Grassy, who also was the uh, creator for the Sailor Jerry's Spice Rum. So if you like Sailor Jerry's and you like that brand, this should fall over naturally into your wheelhouse because it's, it's the same type of distiller doing the same type of creative stuff. These are a little bit different. We know Curtis used to work for William Grant. He's brought the Art and the Age stuff in. These are actually built at the Tamworth Distillery, where the other ones are built off-premise, I think, at another distillery. Um, so this is kind of cool for us because it's New Hampshire. Yeah. New ha Tamworth, New Hampshire. We're in the 603, so we're representing, you know. Yeah, there's some gags on that yeah. we can't do. We've only had, like, two 603. We've only had two... Two things we've ever got to review on the show. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Looks like you're playing flute. Um, uh, two things we've ever reviewed on the show. One was the limoncello from uh, the the folks. Yes. Uh, from uh, God damn it. They're out of Salem. I was gonna say you have it right there. Um, I wanted to say Fabrizia. But... Uh, for, yeah, yeah. Fabrizia. Fabrizia, okay. Fabrizia. And uh, these. So this is going to be neat. Yeah. So what do you want to try first? I say let's try the gin. Because it's floral? Yes. Yeah. And it's going to be delicate. So... Did you already memorize all this no, stuff? I was going to read a little bit while you taste it. Oh, okay. So, so I, I like gin. Thing. I can already smell that this is similar to their vodka. Yeah, dude. How right? did you, yeah. Did you get the corn? I, corn 150%. Water? So this is this is a little brochure, and this is what it says. Flora gin. Tamworth Garden Flora gin blends local botanicals into drinkable form. A bouquet unfolding with the sweet wilderness of a New Hampshire hillside. Germanium, violet, lemon of verbena, elderflower, and red clover. Using the oils, resins, whole leaves, and petals of these plants alongside the classic gin botanicals, juniper and coriander, results in a long finish with a touch of sweetness from honey. And they got all their social stuff. Down. Unless you had uh, pizza for lunch and burned the top of your mouth and your tongue and your gums. Or just drank 500,000 Scoville mm -hmm. vodka. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could definitely smell, because I, I smelled the vodka. I, t I think I tasted that one time, I, I, yeah. right after you got it last week maybe. That's I can totally weird. smell that. The base, obviously they're taking their vodka as their base to infuse the botanicals to build the gin. But right. it's sweet. I'm still working on that. It's very floral. It is floral. Mm. Um, it reminds me of the, kind of the G-Vine floral, but yeah. instead of going in the route of like the, the flowery grape, this is more like a... a Herbal a, flower. Like the, a, field a field of flowers. flowers. Yeah. Like you just, that are just mixed. Not like a, a, a field that you've put all the flowers in place, just a bunch of stuff. Like all just playing out and Wild blowing flowers. in your face. Wildflowers. Wildflowers. Wild Not that I know of any, all those things you named for all those pretty Fl specific flowers and stuff, I've never seen in the wild. Violets? Okay, maybe. Okay. Uh, but def, I don't know yeah, if I've seen violets in the wild. Maybe. Yes, exactly. No, no, I don't. You know me, I'm a topper. A violet is like those, no. I've never they're seen they're, in the they're wild. purplish, they're actually violet I've seen colored. people put them. Yeah. That's the name. I've never seen elderflowers. I've seen wild. I've never seen lemon juice. I think I went off off oh, the kilter here. Uh, You've never seen lemon juice? No. <laughs> not, no not growing in law. <laughs> lemon verbena I've never seen, but it's in uh, the Cocktail and Sons syrups. Okay. Red clover. I've seen clovers that are dying and they turn red. Yeah. I, this is kind of interesting. Cause I, it's American style. You don't get a... I, do, I don't get... Is there juniper in it? Yes, yeah, juniper and coriander so is the base, but... Uh, coriander. It's not heavy like a lemon dry. The mother of all cilantro. The mother of all cilantro. Uh... No, it's, it's, and the child of all cilantro at the same time. Mm. Mm. That's weird. That's hermaphroditic. It's Ouroboros-like. Whoa. Um, all right, I've never been to that island. Or, the oh. Ouroboros? Yeah. Do you know what the Ouroboros is? No. It's the dragon who is eating oh, his own tail. Yeah. yeah. Right when you said it, the dragon, I kind of figured out what you were trying <laughs> to say. 
This uh, is unique. I like this. It is. It's different. I don't get a lot of juniper though, which is fine for me, because like juniper is like a not, little bit. I don't juniper know. doesn't really excite me. Like I'm not like, ooh juniper, I love juniper. Well, it's definitely not the London Dry. The smell is different though. It's definitely got like mm -hmm. almost like a malty smell to it. Yeah. What's cool is there's a whole like all these American gins. I think they get away from like the heavy, heavy juniper. Yeah. And well, I mean, but there's not Bro a Brockman's in isn't an American gin, but there's like a lot of different gins out there that have like a variety of flavors. Right. That is so distinct. It's not like going from whiskey to whiskey. You always have the oak. You always right. have a little bit of smoke. You always have a little bit of those right. caramel notes. The components, but they, you don't have to do that. In gin, you have a lot you have, of range. You have juniper. Just because you have to, but then you throw all this other stuff in there, and juniper is hidden. Yeah, like that tastes like more definitely a floral flavor. That is a type of gin I would like to drink, probably more in line with something very light, like a gin martini. That'd be good in aviation. In aviation, yes, I can totally see that. In the aviation. lavender, yeah, you, it, it pairs perfectly with it. Um, it wouldn't work in things that call for driving juniper, London dry no. flavor. It also doesn't have citrus to it. Probably not a gin and tonic. Right. Maybe it would it would be like the other gin and tonics. They turn into something completely different. They, yeah. They don't taste like a gin and tonic. Like Definitely. when you do Brockman's and stuff. But that one doesn't have any real citrus driving flavor, which an American almost always has some level of citrus playing off the bounce. So Sometimes kind of it's really forward, like the St. Augustine's. Right. And that's like the primary component. I, 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 yeah, I like the... I like... I've always favored floral gins. I like the Floraison from G-Vine. I like the um, Green Hook Gin Smiths with the coriander and the chamomile. So that that already that's Sold an you. easy win for me. You know? Nice. Yeah. All right. So this. I'll, uh, I'll, and I'll read. Looks like drink. blueberries. So the black trumpet Looks blueberry like black cordial. Oh. It's like a. Oh, it's go. a tongue twister. Black trumpet blueberry cordial. You didn't seem like you had a lot of trouble. Uh, I felt like I did. <laughs> a, a unique blend of the season's best sweet, savory, sweet and savory flavors. Uh, our black trumpet blueberry cordial is made with tart handpicked blueberries and forged black trumpet mushrooms from our neighbors at New Hampshire Mushroom Company. Oh. House-grown lavender and lemon verbena reinforce fresh flavors, creating a rare cordial that brings to mind a prize-winning blueberry pie. Does it bring to mind a prize-winning blueberry pie? I don't pie? know of many prize-winning blueberry pie. I don't even know of any very many blueberry I don't think I've ever had a blueberry pie. <laughs> Have you? Somebody? Me? Yeah. I don't think so. It's too sweet anyway. Oh, yeah. um, it, it, I almost taste crust in that. No, seriously. There's no, like a the mental connection of, of the fact that you're having a blueberry pie. Um, man, I have had a blueberry pie. I, I, I feel like I really like a blueberry. I want a blueberry pie right now. You know what? No. What? You have one? I think I'm going to get you one for your birthday. Oh, huh? well, there you go. <laughs> I, I, if you can find a blueberry pie. I oh, think. I can find a blueberry pie. You think so? You should have somebody make one. You think you can go to the store pie. and buy a blueberry pie this season? Yeah, of course. It's not a seasonal thing? I'll it's get, not the season of blueberries. I'll get a blueberry pie from blueberry. Texas. The base has still got that same, that same uh, malty like corn, whatever that is. I can smell it. base, but it's not nearly as pronounced it. as no, it is you know, here. It's just it's on the nose, primarily. Uh, it does have like a a blueberry skin flavor to it more than the pulp. The pulp more than the juicy sweetness. Probably because there's not so a lot. So the skin of can be tart. Right. I find it has a little bit of that, like the biting, not necessarily tartness, but it could also be the alcohol playing in there, that it carries the flavor very well. I was going to say, the cool thing is it's not uh, overly syrupy and sweet, no. so you get the flavor to come through without being like... But would you, yeah. s could you see using that instead of a blueberry schnapps? Well, blueberry schnapps is bad because it's not even it's real. It's sweet. Um, well, blueberry schnapps is like overly sweeter. Yeah. I know, like, with root... I don't know if that's going to come out in something that's not a delicate drink. I've had a hard time with blueberries and infusions yeah. to begin with, because blueberries suck at infusing. They obviously know more about it than I do. Well, the thing uh, about blueberries is they're actually purple, right? <laughs> I yeah, mean, when yeah. you when you, when you get something like this, it's actually yeah. like a Merlot kind of color, right? Yeah. Even, if anything... <sighs> wow, you almost dropped a, a quarter of an ounce. I know. That would have been scary. But it would have been a sticky mess, so it, that's it why I was worried about it. <laughs> Um, so out of the out of those, I like that. I mean, they're completely different. They are. They're different products. I, I'm just this one. I'd have a little bit. This one, I'd have to build cocktail designs around it, like specifically this, for that. This seems like a sipping thing. You put a little little ice in something, and you can. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. Or chilled. Bowl. I could see that being yeah. really good chilled. I would probably feel like this could hurt me. I don't know what the what what a cordial ranks in at. Cordials tend to be a little bit sweeter, so usually in the twenties or. Right? 
mid twenties. But say, oh, this is forty two, and that is twenty five. There you go. Yeah. What did I say? Mid twenties or mid thirties? Twenties. Okay. Yeah, you're right on target. Right, literally on. Uh, that's where it plays. But more that, fuel to the fire that you know your shit. Yeah, but that doesn't stop the fact <laughs> that it's still gonna mess you up if you drink a couple of these while you're sipping, enjoying them. You're gonna be enjoying sleeping, not soon after. Uh, yeah. So there is a it's sampling fun. of the Art and the Age Garden Infusions, which you should totally check out. I don't know if they have other ones, but it's based on the fact that their history shows they have other products like the gingers and stuff like right. that. I, I can see definitely cool flavors coming out of, out of that distillery. Cool. Plus, it's always cool to see, see something local, which is yeah. awesome. Something local and something different, you know, using that look. Like I love kit, uh, farm to table places right. because you get local ingredients. And it's cool to yeah, be, they, have they, that connection. They to taste that good. Stuff. But at the same time, I don't know if they're phenomenally better. Like, I know people are like, oh, it's always better to do, like, a nice, uh, it's always better to have homegrown. Okay, that might be true, but it's also just better as a general thing. Like, when you're eating yeah. food you know is actually made in that area, Probably fresher. mentally feels better. Freshness may play a part, depending on how local. New York isn't that far. Is that right. considered local? Like, if you order a local, you know, is that far on the table? I guess. Uh, so... The technology has changed. You can freeze things now. You can move things. You can chill things, and you can choo, move them from one place choo. to another. Choo choo, choo choo. Ready? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, like that was violent. Scoville on your yeah fucking hand. That was my hand, Scovilles. <laughs> All right. Uh, question of the day: What is what is your opinion of farm to table versus just purely having an organic label on it? Yeah. Do you notice the difference if you go to like a farm to table place or a place that's? I've like never been to a farm to table place. What? Besides where do I go to that? I don't. That's oh, that's a new have, thing. I'm gonna have to take you places. They can't be very far. No. <laughs> no, they're, they're not far at all. There's a farm right down the road. We're gonna go eat in there. In there. How about Burlington? Is that far? That's not far to table. It's Burlington. But th they don't have farms in Burlington. <laughs> yeah, Burlington's fine. <laughs> uh, not your average Joe's. Is that far to table? Go to the Bancroft. Go to the Tuscan Kitchen in Burlington. Those are both. Oh, those are all farm to table. Yeah. I, I don't. So. Farms. Brr, I just think of cows. Alright folks, question of the day. Choose one. Craft beer, craft cocktails. Go. Ready? Yeah. What tea should I drink? Like this. Yeah, In the straw? Yeah. Oh, work okay. very well that way. I, I'm a huge fan of big obnoxious garnishes. I love the way that yeah. that looks. I think it's a beautiful color drink. It is I'm guessing it's going to taste good. It seems similar to something we made in the past. Yep. And I just tasted it.